the first thing you want to do when you hit a limit problem like this is just not freak out. A lot of people, as soon as they see a, a square root mixed with a trig function, their heart starts racing. They figure this thing's going to be super tough. Remember just to take a breath, and these really aren't usually as bad as they look on the outside. We always want to go through and remind ourselves to try option one, even on the trig stuff. We're going to take our X, and whenever we see an X inside here, we're going to plug in zero for it. So we're taking our limit as x approaches 0 of 7 plus the secant squared of x. And so when we go to plug in our value, we're allowed to drop that limit statement. So once we go to plug in a value, so secant squared, we're plugging in 0 now for x. So really the tough part is, is you know, making sure you can get that secant squared taken care of. You don't always have your calculator with you, so you got to remember your unit circle. You also want to remember your rewrites on stuff. So remember that secant theta is the same as 1 over cosine theta. This one happens to be squared, and so I'm going to rewrite this as 1 over the cosine squared of 0, which is essentially just saying multiply that answer by itself. So we get out of there. What is the cosine of zero? You got to find that on your unit circle. So unit circle material is going to be important for you to just know. So that cosine of zero is one. So really what we're getting out of here, if I wrote it all out by hand, would be seven plus cosine is one. We'd still need to square that because of the squared. So then cleaning this thing up, we end up with the square root of seven. One divided by one is one. And we end up with the square root of 7 plus 1 is the square root of 8. So in the end, it was really just about knowing some unit circle and really about not getting freaked out when you first saw it. So the limit as x approaches 0 of this equation is going to be the y value, the square root of 8.